class we have seen uh, how to convert a sine wave or a triangular wave into a square wave which can be applied uh, at the input of a clock at the input of a counter so that we can measure the frequency. In particular we have seen wh what is the problem if the input signal is noisy and how we get rid of that using a Smith trigger. In the previous class we have studied the functional behavior of a Smith trigger, okay? how it acts or what it does. We have not seen the circuitry or the realization of how a Smith trigger is made. So, let us talk about that in this class. Okay. So, the topic is Smith trigger circuit. You may uh, recall that in an additional video, uh, we actually have seen this while studying op amps and uh, I just have mentioned that Smith trigger is nothing but wrongly connected amplifiers, inverting or non-inverting amplifiers. Okay. So, we let, 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 let us first draw a uh, inverting and non-inverting amplifier. So, let me draw the op amp uh, uh, plus minus. You can give the input here you can give a feedback to the negative side, negative input like this, this is V O, this is call this R 2, R 1, this is grounded which means uh, this, this is what? This is a uh, non-inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier okay right now let me also draw side by side the inverting amplifier so this is the feedback resistance this is the call it r1 r2 let me give the input here like the input here and uh, this is output. This is what? This is inverting amplifier. These are correct circuits. Okay. Now, I will draw wrongly connected, oppositely connected uh, amplifiers. What, what I will do? I will simply make this minus and this plus. Okay? So, let me make it minus and make this plus. So, now this is no longer a non-inverting amplifier. Okay? We have uh, done detailed analysis why this is no longer an invert, non-inverting amplifier. Output will no longer be proportional to input. Now, in this circuit, output can take only two stable values, which are either this V supply plus V supply or the minus V supply. These are the only two stable values of the output. Output will not take any other value between this plus and minus V supply. Okay? So, this is not an amplifier, but this is Smith trigger. Okay? Similarly, here also if you make this opposite, make this minus, make this plus this will no longer be a inverting amplifier, this will become also a Smith trigger. Here also output can take only two possible values, two possible stable values V supply and minus V supply. Okay? So, note 
for both this both this type of Smith triggers they both will act as a Smith trigger there is a small difference which we will study soon ok. Uh, for both of them V O can take only two values two stable values plus V supply or minus V supply. Okay. So, I request you uh, uh, please go back uh, in one of those videos where we did a detailed graphical analysis I mean by with drawing the static characteristic of an op amp we solved how the output uh, what should be the output voltage uh, you may go back to those videos that will be helpful I guess. Okay. Uh, but let me also uh, tell you very quickly uh, let me give you some intuition here consider this circuit ok if if uh, if I give say uh, some ok uh, let us do the analysis this way let us take it for granted that output can take only these two values ok positive V supply or minus let us take it for granted at this moment I will justify later ok. So, assume V O is equal to plus V supply at some moment ok at some moment. So, this so at this point, uh, point what can I write V supply positive. So, what will be the put value of the voltage at this point let us apply potential divider rule here because no current goes in this branch this current is 0 you know. So, this is 0 volt so this is V supply so this will be V supply divided by R 1 plus R 2 multiplied by R 1. So, this is the voltage at this point. Now, I give some input here which I can change ok. Say also say input is changing. Now, if the input is say uh, 0 volt ok if I if, if I make the input equal to 0 volt what will be the output say if this is 0 volt this is this is positive this is also positive right this is positive. So, this is also positive if R 1 equal to R 2 then this is nothing but uh, half of this. So, that is also positive. So, this is always positive if this is positive this is positive. So, this is also positive. So, this point is at the same value like this and is positive. Now, if this is 0 this is positive. So, V p is at a higher value than V n. So, output will be positive V supply. So, it will remain at positive V supply if I make this equal to 0. If I make it lower than 0 if I make it lower than 0 Let me also write what I just said right now input equal to 0 volt implies V O equal to V supply. Now, if I take input equal to less than 0, so this, this is negative, this is positive, so V P is at higher value and if V P is at higher value what is the output? Output is positive ok. So, then let me write input equal input less than 0 will also imply output equal to V supply. If I make the input say slightly positive ok slightly positive slightly positive input then what will be the output? This is positive 
but this is slightly positive. And so, if this is more positive, the output will be still positive, because as long as this is at higher potential, the output will be positive, right. So, if out input is slightly positive, output will remain at V supply, will not change. But now, say I make the input more and more positive, okay. So, I make it more positive, then it depends whether this input is greater than the current value of V p or not. Okay? If the input is less than the current uh, V p, then output will remain positive. But if I make input higher and higher more and more positive, then at some value this V n will be greater than V p and then the output will become immediately negative. Now, let me ask at what value of the input this output will become negative. Okay. So, question for what value of input V o will become negative? This is the question. What is the answer? The answer is simple. The input has to be greater than the value of V p which is this. Okay. So, answer is the input must be greater than this value V supply multiplied by R 1 divided by R 1 plus R 2. If the input is, so this is the rule, if the input is greater than this value, this is a positive number, okay? because V supply is right now this is output is positive. So, a positive uh, value is coming here. Now, if I make the input more positive than this, that means V n more positive than V p, then output will switch immediately from a positive value to negative value. Right? So, this is the boundary or transition value this is the value of the input. If you make the input beyond this more positive than this, output will become uh, negative. Okay? So, here I can write the rule. If input goes beyond greater than V supply R 1 divided by R 1 plus R 2, this will make V o negative, V o equal to negative that means negative V supply. Okay. So, I can okay, let me write minus V supply. Okay. Fine. Now, uh, then what will happen? Then uh, So, so now, so the moment when input has gone below this value, above this value, sorry, above this value, output is now negative. So, let me now write that now, okay, now output is negative at this. So, let us see what will happen after this. So, now output is negative okay, and input ha that has gone above this value. Okay. Now, so if uh, so this is minus V supply, if this is minus V supply then this will also be minus V supply R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 potential divided rule and then the same value comes here. So, this is now negative. So, now this is negative. 
Okay. So, at this moment this is negative and input is positive. Now, say I, I, I am decreasing the input. Okay. So, now I am decreasing lowering the input, what will happen to the output? Output will change the moment input which is same as V n goes below V p. Okay. So, now output will change. Okay, I, I could write it here. If input goes below, okay. now if input goes below this value, this is minus, minus v supply r 1 by r 1 plus r 2. If input is decreasing and now it becomes lower than this value, then output will become output will change. If this is lower than this, then output will become positive again, because this is lower, this is higher, then output will be positive, positive again. Okay? So, the moment input goes uh, lower than this, output will become positive v supply. Okay? So, that is the rule. So, let me erase Let me write that starting from the, uh, the asum, starting from the fact that now V O is negative V supply. Okay. So, I could ask the same question for what value of input V O will become positive now. It is now neg already negative. So, for what value of input it will become positive and the answer is input has to go below this value. Okay. So, this is the boundary value of the input or transition value of the input when both this are V n and V p are equal and then if you uh, decrease input further, then output will be positive. Okay. So, for uh, this uh, Smith trigger, okay. so let me write the rule. Uh, output becomes positive if or when input goes below and output becomes negative when input goes above okay so let me draw some diagram time versus say input say the input is changing like this uh, maybe a triangular wave you can also use sine wave and say this height represents the value of this v supply okay so let let me call this value as the upper trigger point let me just give it a name upper trigger point say and let me call this value the negative v supply oh this multiplied by r1 r1 okay let me call this as ltp c okay so let me denote this height say this height is uh, 
same as this UTP. Okay, and say this height is LTP, right? And then how will the output be? Output. So you see, at this moment, output is sorry, input is crossing the upper trigger point it's going above this so output will become negative so at this moment output will become negative i don't know what it was before that but at this moment it will surely become negative and it will remain negative until and unless here input goes below this lower trigger point okay so here and then it will become positive. So, at up to this point, it will remain negative. Negative means minus V supply. And here it will become plus V supply. And it will remain so until and unless I reach this point when it will become again negative. Okay. So, this is how this circuit works okay and uh, let me call this let me call this as circuit 1 circuit 1 and let me call this as the other one i will uh, call it as circuit 2 So, what I have done here, this is for circuit 1. Okay. So just observe, so this is for circuit 1. Observe for circuit 1 again. Uh, the output decreases when input increases. Similarly here, output increases when input decreases. Output increases when input decreases and output decreases goes down, goes low when input increases okay opposite behavior input increases output decreases right so we call this as a inverting smith trigger why is in uh, inverting because when input increases output decreases okay this is called an inverting smith trigger which is nothing but wrongly or oppositely connected non inverting amplifier okay so we did the analysis for this now let's do the analysis for this circuit how will this behave okay let me start writing from here once again i will uh, my approach will be very similar. Okay? So, my approach will be, uh, I will take it granted at this moment that output can take only two stable values, positive V supply and negative V supply. I will justify that later. For now, let us assume output can be either positive V supply or negative V supply. So, let us assume at any moment v o output is equal to plus v supply positive okay so this is positive and this is okay this is at 0 volt so this is input call it v i and this 
you can call the CP. Now, output is positive. See, if input is 0, okay, if say uh, input is equal to 0, 0 volt, then this is 0, this is positive. What will be VP? It is some sort of average of this two voltages V i and V o, you know. This is nothing but, okay, I, let me also write uh, the value of V p here. I write V p is equal to V i r 2 V i r 2 plus V o r 1 plus V o r 1 whole divided by r 1 plus r 2. A weighted average of V i and V o, this is V p. Now, if input is 0 volt, then V p will be positive, this is positive. So, you are assuming this is positive, V supply. So, this is positive, this is 0. So, this is this will be positive of course. Okay. So, this implies V p greater than 0 positive and if this is greater than 0, the static characteristic of op amp says this is greater than V n. So, output will be positive, output will remain positive output will remain at positive value. Now, say I make input greater than 0. So, this is positive, this is positive, V p will of course, be positive and therefore, output will remain positive. Now, say I make input less than 0, then what will happen? If it is slightly negative, but this is sufficiently positive. Okay? So, here you can see this is slightly negative, this is sufficiently positive. So, their combination can uh, be still positive. So, this can still be positive. So, output will remain positive. So, that means, slight negative input will not change the output. So, I have to make input sufficiently negative, negative enough so that this point V p goes below V n 0 volt, then only output will change. So, let me ask the same question. The question is for what input V o will change, will change or will become so, right now it is positive will become negative. Let me make some space. Okay. So, this is the question for what input output will become negative? Answer. What is the answer? I have to make it sufficiently negative so that V p is slightly lower than 0 volt and then, will, then the output will change. Okay? So, what is the boundary condition? The boundary condition is that uh, the value of V p should be so that sorry value of V i should be so that V p is equal to 0 volt that is the boundary condition. Okay? So, the boundary condition So, the boundary condition is the condition when V p will be equal to 0, exactly equal to 0. Okay? Uh, we actually need V p to be slightly less than uh, 0, okay? you can write it slightly less than 0. So, this implies, let me write the value of V p from this. So, V i r 2 plus V o r 1 divided by r 1 plus r 2, this should be slightly less than 0, which will imply, now this you can forget the denominator. So, this will imply V i r 2 less than V o r 1, V i r 2 less than minus V o r 1. Okay? 
So, from this I can write V i is less than V o r 1 by r 2 minus this is the boundary condition. So, if you make V and what is the value of V o at this moment? V supply. Okay. So, I can write this as V supply. So, this is the boundary condition. If you make V i lower than this, then output will go from positive to negative. Okay. Similarly, now once this is already negative, okay, then what will happen? Okay, let, now, let us see. So, now this is now output is already negative. Now, V o is already negative. Okay. So, this is minus V supply. Now, I will ask again the same question. For what input output will become positive, will become positive. So, that is the cost question. Okay. So, for what input output will become positive? So, it will become positive when this V p goes above 0 volt, this is 0 volt. So, V p has to go above 0 volt. So, that means, so the answer V p has to be greater than 0 volt. Now, how what is V p? V p is nothing but V o. So, we have it here. Okay. So, let us put that value V o r 1 plus V i r 2 divided by r 1 plus r 2, this has to be greater than 0. So, which means this has to greater, be greater than 0. Okay. And at this moment, V o is equal to minus V supply. So, from this I can write V minus V supply R 1 by this is greater than 0, this, this is the condition. Okay. So, this is the boundary condition, boundary condition okay. and uh, since V o is equal to minus V supply. So, from this I can write that V i has to be greater than I bring this on that side. So, it becomes plus V supply R 1 and divided by R 2. So, this is the condition. Okay. So, let me write the rule for uh, this this circuit, this second circuit, circuit 2. Okay. The rule for circuit 2 output will become positive when input goes uh, above this V supply R 1 goes above V supply R 1 by R 1 plus R 2. Similarly, output will become negative when input goes, let us see, it is written here minus V supply R 1 by R 2 below Okay. So, that means, this 
I can call the upper trigger point. This I will call the lower trigger point. Okay. So, once again, uh, if I give If I give this input, the question is how will the output look like? Okay. So, for this circuit, you see output will become positive when input goes above the upper trigger point. Okay. So, this is the upper trigger point which is same as V supply R1 by R1 plus R2. Okay. Somewhere here I will have V supply somewhere down there I will have the value minus V supply and this lower trigger point is equal to minus V supply R1 by R1 plus R2. Okay. Now, if the input goes above this output will become positive. So, here it will become positive. I do not know what it was before this, but here it will become positive and it will remain positive until and unless input goes below this value which is here. So, here it will go negative like this and here it will become positive again like this. Okay. So, you observe output increases when input increases Okay, you see here uh, input is increasing, output is also increasing. Similarly, here you see input decreasing, output decreasing. So, there is a correlation between the input and output. Unlike the previous circuit where the thing was reverse. So, here output also decreases when input decreases. Okay. So, we call it, we call this uh, circuit uh, it is a non-inverting type symmetrical. So, circuit 2 is a non-inverting symmetrical C H M R T T trigger because input and output changes together one increases. So, the other also increases, okay. but the previous one as I said before that was a inverting symmetric. Okay. So, let me conclude this video, this class by saying that, uh, so what have we done so uh, in this class? We have drawn initially two amplifier circuits, non-inverting and inverting. Then we have swapped the plus minus uh, inputs here as well as here as well as and we said that this acts as a symmetric of where the output can be only positive or negative, positive V supply or negative V supply. And we have asked a question that for what value of input the output will change from positive to negative or negative to positive, here as well as here. So, for what input output will become positive to negative and negative to positive. To find that you simply have to consider the rule of the op amp which says output becomes positive if V p is higher than V n. So, find out the value of input which will may make V p higher than 0 volt or lower than 0 volt. Similarly, here you know in this circuit V p is at this voltage which depends on uh, V supply. So, find out the in value of input which will make the input lower than V p or higher than V p. So, that the output becomes uh, uh, positive or negative. Okay. So, this is what we have seen and 
these transition values of input we have called they are upper trigger point or lower trigger point. Okay. Uh, yes, and uh, oh, last thing, as you know, that the hysteresis band, okay, hysteresis band is what is the gap as we have defined before between these two values, upper trigger point minus lower trigger point. So, therefore, for this circuit this will become 2 V supply R 1 by R 1 plus R 2. Similarly, you can find the hysteresis band for the other circuit. And uh, one uh, important point last thing in this circuit which was originally a non inverting amplifier we have modified it this becomes a inverting type Smith trigger which means output decreases if input increases. On the other hand in this circuit which was originally an inverting amplifier when we change the plus minus sign this behaves like a non inverting Smith trigger which means output also increases if input increases. Thank you.